G'day guys, Ryan here from Next Level Adventures and welcome back to Showcase. Today we've brought you to the beautiful town of Ryleston in Midwestern New South Wales and we're going to be giving you guys a look around so that you know the next time you head out to Ryleston what there is to do and everything that you need to know about this beautiful little town. Anyway, let's get right into it. Welcome to Ryleston, a small town in the New South Wales Midwest. Ralston is a considerably small town with a population of around 650 people. It is a sister town to Candos, with only 8 kilometres separating the two. Some consider them to be one large combined town. Well, there is no certainty about where the name Ralston actually came from. A common theory is that it was named after the English village Ralston, near Yorkshire, where most of the wool from the area was sent. Although with no historical records on why the town was named that, it's impossible to know. The traditional name for the Ralston area is Combamalang. Ralston is easily accessible within a day trip from Sydney, located 237 kilometers west of Sydney, 56 kilometers southeast of Mudgee, and 99 kilometers north of Lithgow. There is stacks to do in Ralston and the surrounding areas. There is an excellent and very detailed heritage walk of the town. It covers a total of 19 places of interest and many of which are notable for their warm sandstone construction. Let's take a look. So starting off with the School of Arts, which was built in the early 1900s. This was originally a library and centre for meetings in Ralston. The 1926 Memorial Hall, which was built to commemorate people from the district who served in the First World War, is located right next door, on the corner of Louis and Kujigong Street. For a number of years, the building has been used as the town's picture theatre and as a community hall. Up next is Jackson's Corner, located on the corner of Louis and Kujigong Streets. The building was built by John Wesley Jackson and they are shops that were originally constructed in stone. They were destroyed by fire in the mid-1920s and the new buildings were erected on the original foundations. Further down Kujigong Street, the stone barn by the showground gate and Jackson's original house with slab walls tucked behind the shops on the north side remain intact to this day. Well, up next, there is a debate about the next attraction, the Globe Hotel. The age of the hotel is often debated about within the local community. The sign on the awning proudly declares circa 1855, but the Heritage Trail insists in 1880, Mr. Holland, an ex-saddler, and his father-in-law, Mr. Thomas Owen, an ex-policeman, built a sandstone hotel of 12 rooms. It was soon extended to accommodate the increased business bought by the railway in 1884. It has undergone considerable alteration with the entrances being changed in the 1930s. The sample room next door was constructed to provide a space for commercial travellers to display their wares to local stock keepers. The building has a very pleasant beer garden and is located at 46 to 50 Louis Street, Ralston. Up next is St Malachy's Catholic Church, which was built in 1875 to replace an earlier timber church and is another main attraction in Ralston. The church was built by Dean O'Donovan to cater for 19 families who provided their own seating. The soaring, steeply pitched roof, ornate timber lace fretwork, masonry courses and Italian bell tower give it a great appeal. The architectural style is Victorian Gothic. The addition at the front was made in the 1960s with stone from a private chapel on Monovay, a sheep and grazing property 20 kilometres from Ralston. The stained glass windows commemorate Mary and George Holland who owned the Globe Hotel and provided free accommodation for the priests who celebrated their mass in the church. There are plenty more attractions located in Ralston, including the Bridgeview Inn, located at 30 Louis Street. This elegant sandstone building was built in the early 1870s as a public house and hotel and is listed on the New South Wales Heritage Inventory List. It was built for publican Goodwin Spires Hall and opened in 1872. In 1895 it became a bank and manager's residence. It was used as such until 1957. It was acquired by the Ralston and District Historical Society in 1960. Speaking of the Bridgeview Inn, located behind the Bridgeview Inn and built for the local blacksmith, James Nash is this house. A simple weatherboard home dating from the 1890s. It was moved from near the showground in 1984. The building is now home to the Cottage Museum and Family History Archives of Ralston and District Historical Society. 
Just around the corner lie Hall's Cottages, these two impressive early cottages which are located between the Cottage Museum and the Louis and Derby Streets. They were erected by Goodwin Spires Hall, who built the Bridgeview Inn to house his large family. Over the years, they have been used by a number of businesses, including a news agency, bootmakers, garage, solicitor's office and the Commonwealth Bank. Just nearby, on the corner of Mudgee Street and Kujigong Street, is St James English Church. This was consecrated in 1864 and features impressive stained glass windows. It was one of the earliest Anglican churches west of the Blue Mountains. At the rear is a small slab building that functioned as both a church and Ralston's first schoolhouse in the 1850s. Not too far away from St James Church lies another church in Wesleyan Church. Located on Ilford Road, the Wesleyan Church was built in 1884 to serve the local Methodist community. When all the Methodist churches combined, it became the uniting church for the town. The building replaced a smaller sandstone brick Zeon Chapel that stood next to St Andrew's Church. A temperance hall once stood in the present roadway. The Federation period church manse on the opposite corner is of brick. Some of our final historical buildings are located in the main street, including the historical police complex at 89 Louis Street. These buildings in the police complex date from 1875 to 1895 and consist of the courthouse, the constable's house with sandstone lock-up and cells, the sergeant's house and the sandstone slab stable at the rear. The rear of the constable's house houses the current police station and the courthouse is still in use today. Just across the road from the police station is the post office, which was built in 1880 and operated continuously until 2007. A postal service to Ralston was established as early as 1850, when the building was completed and it had a separate post office and telegraph office. There was a residence for the postmaster on the right-hand side of the building. And the final historical attraction in Ralston is the Shire Hall, located right next to the post office in Louis Street. The Ralston Shire Hall was erected in 1913 and extended until the late 1970s. The Ralston Shire was formed in 1906 and lasted until 2004 when it became a part of the Midwestern Regional Council. There is a fair bit to do and see in the surrounding region. With Mudgee only a 40 minute drive, there are plenty of cellar doors to visit in the region. Windermere Dam is also not too far away, on the banks of the Kujigong River. It's located about 32 kilometres northwest of Ralston and 13 kilometres beyond Kujigong Waters Park. It was completed in 1984 to meet irrigation stock and domestic needs in the Kujigong Valley. The main attractions of the dam and lake are camping, with cabins and caravan sites available. Plenty of room for water sports including skiing, sailing, canoeing and swimming, and of course fishing. The lake is stocked with golden perch, murray cod, silver perch and catfish. The lake covers 20 square kilometres with a total capacity of 368 gigalitres. The wall of the dam is 825 metres long and 67 metres high. There is also another small dam to check out at Dun Swamp, located around 40 kilometres west of Ralston on Davy Road. Dun Swamp Gangutty was originally built to provide water for the Candos Cement Works when it was in operation. Located on the banks of the Kujigong River and nestled amongst some stunning sandstone pagoda rock formations, Dun Swamp Gangutty is home to over 107 amazing bird species. There are a number of walking tracks around and it offers an excellent opportunity to study the biodiversity of the region. You can also canoe at Dun Swamp. Other attractions within the general region include Glen Davis, located around 60 kilometres south of Ralston via Glen Alice Road. Glen Davis is an old shale mining ghost town on the Cape T River. The first mining tunnel, which was established in 1881, later became the basis of the major mining enterprise which opened in 1938. The post office was opened the following year. The town was around 2,500 strong at its prime and was all developed around the mine. The mine was named Glen Davis after the Davis Gelatine Interest, who headed the mining consortium. The operation closed down in 1952 due to high costs and increasingly small output, leaving what remains today. A fascinating ghost town characterised by crumbling furnace ruins, retorts and collapsed shafts covered in vegetation and surrounded by steep sandstone cliffs and a profuse array of bird life. Glen Davis has a picnic area with an amenities block. There is a bushwalking trail to Nunes up the Green Gully in the Wallamai National Park, following the old pipeline track. There are lyrebirds, Banksia serrata and assorted eucalyptus. 
information on this walk is available from the museum. The only realistic way to see the ruins of the old shale mining town is to go on one of the Glen Davis Shale Oil Works tours. There are plenty of places to eat in Ralston along the main street, including a Mexican restaurant, pub and a few small bakeries and cafes. There is also an information centre at Ralston that you can visit upon your arrival for any further questions and inquiries. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Showcase. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to Next Level Adventures so that you don't miss another Showcase adventure or anything that we do, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, we will see you in the next adventure.